Hey, I'm just on the way out, so I thought I'd take you with me today. One of the things that I noticed that's coming up soon is that Oprah is having a, a 60s day on one of her forthcoming shows. Um, that set me thinking about the period of time that was known as the decade of peace, love and harmony. Or was it really? Um, I mean, after all, it was a period when we had the Vietnam War and where we were taught that Russia had the bomb and that they were the enemy. We also saw John F. Kennedy move into the, the White House in 1961. He had that famous speech, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Um, President Kennedy, unfortunately, was then assassinated in Dallas in Texas in um, November 22nd, 1963. Um, it was also a time of the space race, um, and anybody who was alive at that time will know what that meant. Basically, the Soviets became the first people to send a man to space, and the Americans then decided they needed one too. So uh, that event actually happened on May the 5th, 1961, when Alan Shepard was sent on Freedom 7 to space. And on May the 25th, 1961, Kennedy actually made that speech where he said he wanted to put a man on the moon before the decade was over. So that's what happened. And then in, um, the US actually won that space race with Apollo 11. Uh, I believe that date was July the 20th in 1969 and at approximately 4.18 p.m. that day uh, Neil Aldrin, Neil, Aldrin, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin um, actually uh, landed on the moon and the famous words Houston, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed were uttered. Um, Neil Armstrong after that then became obviously the first man to put foot on the moon and that was a big, big event in our household the other day. I was only young, but I can still remember everybody sitting around the TV in the UK, because that's where we were at the time. And everybody was enthralled by these pictures that were coming back. And um, it was then that Neil Armstrong actually uttered, you know, one small step for, for man, one giant leap for mankind. Um, so was this the event of the century? Um, for me, probably, and probably for a lot of other people. The 60s were also a time when we saw Germany divide into two separate and probably unequal countries um, with the construction of the huge concrete Berlin Wall and that imprisoned its citizens for the best part of 30 years. After that we had the civil rights movement with Martin Luther King when he made the memorable speech, I have a dream. Just trying to avoid something on the road there so you don't get too bumped. Um, so yeah, Martin Luther King made the I Have a Dream speech and um, he, he was unfortunately assassinated in 1968 by James Earl Ray. So that happened in Memphis, Tennessee. And two months later, Bobby Kennedy was assassinated while running for president. So it was an era that was very, very mixed. But the 60s were perhaps best known as the decade of rock and roll. And it was an era of Elvis and the Beatles. Um, Beatlemania actually took over and the Fab Four, John, Paul, George and Ringo were played on radio stations all over the world. Um, they were literally everywhere and they were seen on the Ed Sullivan Show which was a big deal at the time in the US um, and they performed concerts that sold out in minutes. Uh, that sparked the British invasion. Yeah. By landing in New York they then proceeded to, to change the face of rock and roll effectively and other great British bands such as the Rolling Stones, The Who and The Animals actually came forward. Got to be careful here, there's a very often speed traps here, so we don't want to get done today. It's been a little while since I've got done. But I don't want to get done when I'm talking to you, because he's going to ask what the hell's going on. Make me look like a nutcase, talking to the door. <laughs> anyway, um, it was also a time of Woodstock, and um, nearly half a million people went over to a 600 acre farm in New York for the Woodstock Festival, and many top rock musicians were there and it lasted three days, which was basically a weekend of music, love and peace and rock and roll. So it was also a decade where women started wearing mini skirts and you look back on those, those pictures now and you think what the hell were these people on, but that's the way it was, people were wearing mini skirts, leather boots and, and fake eyelashes. Um, men wore paisley shirts, believe it or not, they also had velvet trousers, I don't know who on earth would wear well velvet trousers, but there you go. And um, they also had high collared Regency jackets. Um, men also began to wear their hair long and they had pants or trousers, depending on where you're from, with flares. Bit of a weird time, really. 
Also, in the entertainment industry, we saw uh, Marilyn Monroe die suddenly um, under a murky cloud of suspicion, I might add. Um, her death was officially ruled as suicide, but you know, Monroe was one of the few, um, certainly the biggest of the Hollywood bombshells at the time. But her connection to the Kennedys added to her mystique and her popularity both then and now since her death. Um, Johnny Carson began a 30 year run um, on TV on, as the host of The Tonight Show and baseball was officially America's pastime. Uh, the major sport in the country was baseball and the whole nation became gripped with excitement as Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris competed against each other in an effort to break Babe Ruth's home run record and Roger Maris actually did it when he got 61 home runs in 1961. Um, that's a record that basically has stood till 1998 when Mark McGuire um, overtook it. Um, also, <laughs> with hardly anybody paying attention, hard to believe today, but the first Super Bowl was played in 1967 with the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Packers won. It was actually a decade in which my UK football team, Wolverhampton Wanderers, actually won something. They won the FA Cup in 1960, and that really is pretty much the last thing they've ever won. Um, the 1960s were also the year, believe it or not, of the first ever handheld calculator which was invented in 1967 by Texas Instruments. If you wanted one, the cost was a mere $2,500 a piece. And we'll come back to the, the price of stuff in, in a little while. Uh, the first cash dispensing machine was installed by the first Philadelphia bank in 1968 and a gallon of gas would have actually set you back 25 cents, while a first class stamp was just 4 cents. A movie ticket would have been 50 cents and the price of a popcorn to go with that would have been 20 cents. Uh, a colour TV was very much seen as a luxury at the time, um, that would have set you back $400 and a refrigerator which really was a luxury. I mean not many people had refrigerators back in the 60s so just count your blessings about today that you know pretty much everybody's got one. Um, anyway a refrigerator would have been 500 bucks. Uh, the median family income back then, at the start of the 60s, was 5, oh, sorry, $5,315, um, and back then you could buy a home for around about $12,700, and it looks like we've got behind a, stuck behind a car that's actually broke down now. Absolutely typical. Never mind. So, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, I was talking about um, the price of a new home being $12,700. Um, a Volkswagen Beetle, if you wanted one, would have set you about $1,769. And if you fancied a Ford Mustang, um, the two-door hardtop, that would have been a mere $2,368. Of course, that was big money then. Also, a can of Coke did not exist in 1962. A bottle was the actual way that people drank Coke back then. And a bottle of Coke would have cost you 10 cents for six ounces, roughly speaking. And today, you know, a can of Coke contains 12 ounces, and you know what the price of a can of Coke is today. Um, so, which brings me to the point of why I've taken you out today. I want to take you and show you a hotel. And I'm going to show you what a hotel looked like in the 60s. And it's really not changed much. So I'm just about to turn into the hotel. And um, I might show you a couple more as well. So sit tight. Okay, here was a typical 60s hotel. could really say is what's changed so yes you could stay here if you come to Orlando on vacation you'd probably get a room here um, fairly cheaply maybe about 30 to 60 dollars somewhere in that price range you certainly wouldn't want to be paying much more than that but, but why would you so it's cheap and cheerful but there is a better option and that better option is a vacation home and I'm now going to take you to a community where there are vacation homes. 